get all of the Protoss army right there. I think he's got enough time for the base. Oh. It's gonna be close. Oh, oh my god! Into another series here at ESL ANZ Champs Winter. It is some more StarCraft 2 action for you and a reasonably important uh, series in the context of things, as all of them are, as we're here into day three light. Um, what are you thinking about this one? We do have Leo and Azura, right? I, I hope Leo Russia was inspired a little bit, you know? Like, I feel like he's a player who needs needs something to go his way. And currently, the way he's been playing, the, the builds he's been going for just hasn't haven't been working for him. I am a little worried for him because I do know that Azur, a return contender to ANZ Champs, is quite a strong player and one of the only ANZ representatives that we do have. So we want to root for those guys. Um, at the same token, uh, I'm looking at someone like Leo Russia, uh, who lost 0 2 to Piglet as well. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, at least in the form, I'm kind of feeling like Azur might be as good as Piglet, maybe even a little bit better. So you got your work cut out for you if you're Leo Russia in this series, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Like, I feel like Azur and Piglet are very comparable to each other and I mean we're going to see who comes out on top later on today as they mm -hmm. are going to be facing each other but yeah as you were saying Leo Russia he's at the bottom of the group he he has he has something has to go his way and I hope he at least walks away with at least you know a map win we'll see uh, we do have the map veto coming out there. Death Aura is the pick for Leo Russia. We've seen him run a couple of shenanigans <laughs> on that map from time to time, uh -huh. mostly in the PvPs. Azur's going for Submarine against a more aggressively minded player, although Azur really doesn't mind that map pick of Submarine. He seems quite comfortable on it, likes to go for those very, very scary Terran armies of the Marines and the tanks and get up in your face and apply some pressure to you. Very much fits within his style. And we'll close things out on Oxide. So what do you think about this map, Paul? Yeah, we've seen um, Azure, he's not afraid of Submarine at all. He usually prefers it as well in his series. And we've seen plenty of Terran players apply a lot of pressure on it, just rallying across the map. Again, they don't have a lot of map to traverse to go across with those ta those tanks and those Marines. Yeah, the quicker rush distances in terms of the production rallies coming out mm -hmm. for the Terran. Yeah. Always a scary thing to be facing. Even if you break the main push, you still need to make sure you can deal with the follow-up uh, yeah. effectively. And that's uh, some of the hardest uh, things you have to deal with. We do have the countdown timer starting, so we should be getting into this series. Anything in particular as we got Death Aura on this first map to be keeping an eye out for Light? I, I think all eyes are on Leo Russia, right? Like, what's he going to do here? Does he have anything special? Is he going to do the same thing? I hope not. I hope he has something prepared here. I hope so too. I hope it's something interesting, a little bit of uh, cheese perhaps, a bit of fromage. Mm. I, you know, I like a bit of uh, fresh mozzarella myself. <laughs> I don't know about you, Light, what's your preference? Mm. Um, I'm good with anything. I'm good easy. with anything? <laughs> okay, he likes the diversity of the cheese. He likes the different kinds of cheese. That's a, a man of culture there, Light. <laughs> you do yeah. love to see it. Either way, it is a man who has had a tough time in ANZ Champs. He's a new competitor here. It is the Blue Protoss Leo Russia. And in the top left of Death Aura, we have the Australian Terran player. He is red. He's representing Legacy Esports. It is Azure. Okay, well, so far I am not seeing any proxies, so that's mm. something. Uh, at least from Leo Russia. Uh, he's got that probe after Gateway, though, going across the map, seeing if he can, you know, have a look at uh, what the opening's going to be from Azur, maybe try to mess around with that uh, command center placement and things like that. Uh, quick SCV coming out here for Azura as well. Maybe looking for any kind of shenanigans, trying to find out if there's any uh, BS happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're both just scatting each other, and for good reason. You know, they're both willing to go and proxy. They're just they're both not just macro players. Um, and this is, of course, the third PVT of the day. You know, consecutively. And I hope we do see Leo Russia. Maybe he was tuning in. Maybe he saw Tebow play. Maybe Ranger as well was able to learn something from that. Uh, maybe take that into his play here and adapt. Yeah, potentially so. 
do have the Nexus being dropped down there by Leo Russia. So looks like a pretty similar opening to what we saw from T-Ball in that last series, actually, where you do just go for the gate into expand and follow it up with the Cyber Core and start getting yourself some gas. As for Azua, the man has just gone for that Reaper expand. So pretty much, I, I feel like I've watched three games yeah. that have started the exact same so far. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, Azua, he confirms that all the pylons are at home, that there is a Nexus, that Leo Rusher isn't rushing in any way, shape, or form. So he's like, okay, fine, I can just expand. I can just play my game. At least for the time being. Mm. No guarantees that he isn't going to start to, you know, get uh, that snowball rolling in terms of getting that uh, premium probe count to start pumping some units out and putting some pressure on. Would love to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And again, like this game may not be as important for Leo Russia, but it's very important for Azure. You know, he's kind of tied up or he has been tied up with Piglet, with T-Ball, you know, kind of fighting for that third, third place spot. And he really needs, you know, a pretty solid win here. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we've already kind of been hard done by. And if you're a fan of ANZ representation <laughs> with someone like Pez not even qualifying. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have someone like Leo Rush actually win this series, it might actually play spoiler to uh, Azure over there, who's mm -hmm. going to be down probably one and three with Piglet yeah. at that bottom of the group. And that's where you're probably really looking at someone like T-Ball likely to qualify. Mm -hmm. um, if not, it's going to be, you know, one of these, one of the ANZ representatives, but maybe not even one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, it could come down to the Piglet versus Azure match later on. Like, that could be the decider um, on who makes it through, especially if Azure, um, you know, he wins here as well. It kind of, it's yeah, it's going to come down to the wire. Yeah, it also depends on T-Ball, but he's mm. been doing quite well. At least he's already beat Piglet head-to-head, -head, so yeah. that always helps him out as well. Um, it's, that's my favorite thing. Maybe even more so than the actual StarCraft itself, just <laughs> watching the groups... Uh, develop and mm -hmm. watching the storylines and seeing which games are going to be the make or break and sometimes you don't know actually that you're watching the make or break game as it's unfolding until two or three games go past yeah it's important that for a couple of these series we are going to have you know some games being played consecutively or sorry um, simultaneously um yes. as so we are going to kind of be updated as the games progress and yeah we kind of won't know what happens until afterwards yeah we have a couple of games like you said being played off stream for the time being uh, we will update you and bring up the standings uh, over the day and let you know how the groups are starting to develop and unfold. So make sure you're keeping an eye on some of these uh, break segments. I do know there's a few of you cheeky buggers out there who just, uh, as soon as the, the gameplay is gone, you just tune out. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, definitely be keeping an eye on the standings if you can, or even just open up the groups in on Liquipedia or something like that and make sure you're keeping an eye on th how things are going. Yeah, definitely. Meanwhile, in the game, we do have Azure going for that 1-1-1 opening. He is going for that Banshee. Cloak is on the way as well. Meanwhile, Leo Russia is pushing across with a War Prism. Yeah, going to put a little bit of pressure on as this, at the same time that he drops that third Nexus. I like to, I like what I'm seeing from Leo Russia. I uh, need to make sure that he's keeping tabs on these Banshees, though, and doesn't take too much damage from them. As Azur seems like he's looking to try to apply some pressure with those Banshees and potentially go for a bit of aggression with a bit of a tank push. Wow, actual pretty hard commitment into ah. these uh, charge lots as he does actually have the potential to go for that add-on and try to focus it down. If he'd actually right-click ah. down the tech lab, he could have actually cancelled the cloak there. Uh, this is a bit difficult for Azur to deal with, though. It doesn't seem like he's actually got enough here at home to be able to deal with this. Now the cloak does come in for the Banshee, and there's another one in towards the natural here, starting to reap a bit of havoc as Leo Russia continuing to warp more gateway units into the main of the Terran. Exactly, and that's what's scary, because he's using all his warp rims across the map, which means it's going to be more difficult for him to defend at home against that Banshee, as there's just nothing to stop it. There's not even a shield battery for safety there, and the Banshee just has free reign. Yes, the Observer has gotten into position to try to mobilize and deal with the Banshee, but the Stalk is warped in, and they're not microed, and it's just continuing to uh, chew down some of these probes, a few SCVs being lost on the other side of the map, but after all said and done, I think Azura is quite <laughs> happy with how things are unfolding here. Yeah, like. Leah Rush, like, he cut pro production or at least he stopped pro production as he was attacking you know maybe there was a little bit too much going on for him and at the same time he lost a bunch of probes and so now he's down to 28 workers he is but he has got those three nexus and i've seen mm -hmm. plenty of protoss players start chrono boosting probes exactly like this and all of a sudden you think they're down and out of a game and then they start to uh pump probes out like absolute demons now you do have the uh stalkers in towards the main here just 
shooting some of those Marines. The double NG base coming out for Azua, who still isn't looking like he's interested in pick, grabbing himself a third CC or anything like that. Does he actually know there's a third Nexus in there? Did he scout over there with the Banshees yet? Uh, I'm pretty sure the Banshee did come across yeah, yeah he okay. did, so he is aware. Um, and because he doesn't have another third CC coming, uh, it's possible that as soon as this Warfism gets dealt with, he's just going to be pushing across with all his tanks and his bio. Yeah, recall comes in, and more and more waves of these charge lots being uh, built up there back at home. Third CC does get dropped for Azur, so he doesn't want to go for any kind of cheeky timing push. Instead, now moving into the upgrades, which is probably something I should have expected with the double NG base being dropped, sort of yeah. more indicating that you don't want to try and uh, end this game right now or anything like that. You do want to try and play things out into a little bit of a longer game. I'm kind of concerned for Leo Russia. There it is, finally. I was like, where's the next tech structure? Like, where are you going from here? And finally, he decides to throw down that Templar Archive. So he is going to be going for, you know, Archons, maybe eventually Storm as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, that pairs nicely with Charge Lots. Definitely does. You do need those upgrades, so you don't want to be falling too far behind in the upgrades. Otherwise, these bio will just start chewing up any kind of charge, charge lots, and then it kind of gets into the situation where you don't land your storms or perhaps your disruptor shots, and all of a sudden you're just losing the fight pretty heavily. Yeah, definitely. And so these banshees are still dealing more damage. Oh, actually, no detection here. So um, where's the observer? Uh, you know, it's just taking its time. <laughs> it's, it's on break, like, okay? Where, Leave it alone. Everyone uh -huh. needs a break, even observers. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong there. Um, shout out to Insano, by the way, with his lo lovely observing. Um, as the Banshee does end up getting pushed away, but it is still alive. Yeah. Dealt with for the time being. He did have an observer actually over towards the left side as well, interestingly enough. Mm. Um, and Azur just continuing that SCV production. Still got about a 10 worker lead after all is said and done, so he's continuing to chip away with these Banshees, keeping the Protoss player honest, who is still not really producing probes. It's interesting. He's got like 700, 800 minerals yeah. back, but he's not really <laughs> making anything. He's supply blocked. He drops three pylons instantly and goes mm. for Storm. Yeah. I'm, I don't think the mechanics are as crisp as they maybe could be for Leo Rushi here. Yeah, like. he's kind of falling apart a little bit, you know, getting a heavy supply block, you know, not, not utilizing all his nexuses, um, being a little bit delayed when it comes to his upgrades or his tech as well. Um, as Like, he is working on Storm, but it's late. He's been losing workers this entire time to the Banshees. The Banshees are still alive. It's very reminiscent to, like, Ranger versus Razorblade with that Raven. Yeah, unfortunate. It's not the position that you want to be. I think, you know, maybe a bit of inexperience shining through there for Leo Russia, whereas Azur, he's been here a couple of times before. He's had uh, plenty of tastes of the competition, so I think he's kind of in his element right now, maneuvering his way through the game, grabbing that armory now, so he wants to continue moving through those upgrades. As for Leo Russia now, he feels like it's go time. Mm -hmm. Even though he's got those three Nexuses, he's actually adding a fourth Nexus <laughs> when he doesn't even have the probe count to be able to saturate it. I'm uh, this maybe you know what this may be the first time he's taken a fourth Nexus. Maybe he doesn't know how to take it correctly. I don't know, but I mean, he, th thankfully. To be fair, he has cheesed a lot in AZ mm. champs. Actually, Azur's stim pack only just finished right now at <laughs> ten minutes, so I don't know what's going on there, light, but. This is a bit of a, a wonky game, if I've ever seen one. I'm, I'm keen to see how it unfolds. Mm. Just looking at being, you know, a boring caster and reading the uh, numbers on the bottom side of the screen, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here if I'm Azul, though. Yeah, one of those numbers is very, it's, it's higher than the other. Yes, one of them is bigger than the other. Bigger, faster, stronger is Azul so far. The huge commitment in with a lot of charge lots. But look at the different angles that Azul has to deal oh. with here. He's just getting on top of all of these units. And what a commitment from Leo Russia. He felt so confident that this was going to work, and it absolutely didn't. It was just crushed by the Terran. Yeah, exactly. Like, as soon as the Zealots went down, the bio just stimmed on top of everything. And you were talking about that awkward sim timing. You know what? He had it done just in time for the attack. It was all planned. And now Azure, <laughs> he's just pushing across the map. Yeah, something else that he planned uh, as we do look at the Western Union economy was that harassment with the Banshee still mm. diving in, still attacking, which means that he has a worker lead. He has an income lead. And, uh, you know, it also helps when you have three times the supply of your army, uh, uh, army of your opponent. I don't think I even need to really spell this one out anymore for <laughs> anyone like I think this game is well and truly done oh, I don't know man you know what there are two high Templar but they are not in position they're over by the third base they're not going to be able to storm the army Liberator sieges up tanks are going to be sieging up and mate what do you do from here 
Uh, go next, I think. You do yeah. three Hi, charge lot. Three charge lots go in at a time. Oh. They both kind of chewed up pretty quickly. There's no storm energy available uh -huh. for those two Templar you were talking about earlier, mm. Light. So they're going to make an Archon, and that's going to die before it can even get a single shot off. The overcharge doesn't really help out Leo Russia, and Azure is going to secure that first game. A dominant showing from the man. Good use of the Banshees. Let's see if he's going to be able to secure the series after this short break. Thanks for sticking around from that break. It is ANZ Champ StarCraft 2. You've dropped yourself right in the middle of a series, and it is Azure and Leo Russia. So far, Azure looking like the better of the two, but there's still opportunities for Leo Russia to win a map here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Azure, it's kind of as expected at the moment, but, you know, as you were saying, we are going to be loading into Submarine. There's a lot of potential there for Leo Russia's style of play, I would imagine. But again, Azure, he's kind of comfortable. I'd say so. I think Leo Russia a little bit out of his element in that last game, mm. uh, a little bit uncharacteristic uh, mistakes for players of this caliber. <laughs> you know, I feel like if you qualify for ANZ champs, you know, you've already shown the the proficiency of making it through the qualifier. Mm. You're probably a pretty damn 
some good StarCraft player, but unfortunately, sometimes competition brings the worst out in us, um, and you're not able to play to your full potential. And I think that was a bit of a shocker from Leo Russia that last game. Uh, some some very uh, unfortunate errors, whereas Azure, a return competitor many, many times, I felt like he was in his element. He played a much better game, and of course, he was rewarded for it. We're not playing, uh, you know, Fortnite or some crazy RNG game, something like that here. We're playing StarCraft 2. You know, if you're the better player, you're usually going to win, right? Yeah, definitely. And I do want to give a little bit of credit to Leo Rusher in that something that we're really missing in these groups are Zerg players. Um, and those are the ones that got knocked out in the qualifiers. Like, that's how a lot of these players made it through. It is in that matchup versus Zerg. Mm -hmm. um, so that was something that was great for him to make it to ANZ champs, but that's what we're lacking here, like in the groups. Yeah, well, unfortunately in StarCraft, you can't just be a one trick pony. Yeah. You can't just have one good matchup because uh, unfortunately, as you move through different stages of competition, you move into different groups. You're not always guaranteed those uh, certain race opponents. Yeah. And he's going to have to turn around his fortune sooner rather than later because uh, obviously he's already down 0-3 in this group, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. He loses this game. He's pretty much done in ANZ champs. And uh, he's going to have to try to reflect a little bit more to get any more value out of ANZ champs because he's not going to be moving in through to the top eight. Whereas Azur, you know, he's still got his chances here. Let's see if he could keep the dream alive for ANZ representation in DreamHack Winter. Yeah, he could be the one and only Australian to make it through to the main event from the groups. Um, but of course, the Russia, he wants to at least put a point on the board, like do something with his run here in ANZ Champs. You don't want to go out with nothing. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like, especially if he is able to take a map, like that could affect Azure, like when it comes to the group standings. It could, or he could just do something crazy and, <laughs> and lose in a beautifully horrific fashion mm. like you know, a uh, very famous musician once said, it's better to burn out than fade away, okay? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what Leo Rush is going for here. <laughs> I I hope so. I hope so. We have a probe coming out on the map. Unfortunately, like the first pylon and gateway are at home. So nothing too crazy. Like I would have loved something like, just go for a forge, mate. Make some cannons. Oh, I, we oh! haven't seen a cannon rush. It's cannon like, rush in PVT. Just, That's something. Mate, that is definitely something. That's the not? one matchup you don't do that in. <laughs> why not, Light? Like, because they have a 50 mineral unit that mm -hmm. can shoot building cannons and then you lose. Yeah. <laughs> That's why not. <laughs> like, do, do you know what? Do something crazy. You know, go for We haven't seen Proxy Void Ray. We haven't, we've barely seen any proxies, to be fair, this entire weekend. I do like weekend. the Proxy Void Ray in PVT, yeah. actually. It's an old favorite of mine. You know, couple, build a couple of stalkers out of one or two gateways. You get the Void Ray to give you that high ground vision. All of a sudden, you're shooting old mate's supply depots <laughs> in the wall and the barracks. And, you know, you're having a good time. Yeah, it's odd to me that the one proxies that Leo Russia has been going for is that four gate, you know? Like, out of all mm. of the ones that you could go for, that's that's what you decide? Yeah, uh, okay. one of the, the less effective ones, for sure. Those yeah. slow zealots. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, like, uh, how would I say it? It's like there's a base level of micro that you need to mm -hmm. make it into a competition like this, and most players who have that base level of proficiency in terms of the micro and StarCraft mm -hmm. mechanics that the fact that they already have that base level is already good enough to defend slow zealots for mm. the most part you know yeah yeah there's like a certain bar right yes. that all these players are above and yep. you, do, you don't expect something like that to work against those players and we haven't right um so yeah we'll see if leo russia has something else here in store for us so far in this game nothing too crazy both players just expanding oh we do have a Stargate opening. Concussive Shell, though. Insano. Oh, oh. <laughs> Insano just makes my job so much easier. Oof. I don't... I, You know, he, he even circles it. Mm -hmm. I want Insano to help me with my homework, to be honest, because I don't <laughs> even need to have all the answers anymore. The man just points out everything that's important for me to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is going to be great for Azure. Like, we were talking about the short rushes since earlier, right? Like, these Marauders are going to be coming out. We're going to have concussive shells, and they're going to be just pushing across. Leo Rusher, we'll see what he makes first from his from his Stargate. Hopefully, it isn't going to be a Phoenix. Bye, Adept. It was nice knowing you. Uh-huh. That's uh, the third PVT where the first Adept has died horribly very early on. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, he did actually scout the Marauders. He saw the Concussive Shell was finished because the Adept was slowed down. And with that True. information, he decides to go for a Void Ray first. And I'll tell you what. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that was the decision. He's, he's dropping a lot of shield batteries. Mm. This might actually be a bit of an overreaction from Leo Rusha, to be honest. This isn't <laughs> hard committing or anything from Azure. This is two Marauders. That's it. 
He's really throwing <laughs> his opponent off with this. Like, mm. uh, Leo Rusher is, like, preparing for the end of the world. Yeah. And it's like, come on, mate, relax. It's just a little bit of wind, you know. We're, like, like 20 kilometers an hour winds. It's, it's not a cyclone or something. You don't mm. have to, you know, go to Coles and... and ransack the shelves uh -huh, just chill the hell out you don't have to stock up on on toilet paper or anything <laughs> like that oh, um, let's not go through that dark <laughs> chapter in history again oh god but with the void ray and the adepts the two marauders do the, the terrifying two ador um, marauders get dealt with um what at the cost that? of all what those what is shooters. that like oh that is a cyclone upgrade cyclone upgrade yeah okay yeah, it makes them deal have more dps i believe um it is uh, something accelerators but i can't quite recall pig the name know. yeah pig, pig even pig even knew what the the carrier upgrade in brutal was called oh my god so there you go <laughs> jesus that's why Christ. he's casting the big leagues and i'm still here mm -hmm. you know uh casting leo russia uh, uh, casting well casting leo russia yeah look maybe i think i was gonna mo more say casting counter-strike but mm. uh, rather than the superior esport that is starcraft 2 but anyway you do have the uh the cyclone coming out it hasn't got its full dps but it's more uh more than good enough to deal with those adepts and push them out of there mm -hmm. yes that's all i have to say <laughs> This is the first time I've seen Glaives this whole competition. Really? Where's it been? Have oh. you seen Glaives yet? Yeah, in the PvZ. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen. I haven't had the Ooh. fortune of seeing Glaives okay, yet. It's one okay. of my favorite builds. Mm, interesting. Interesting that he's whipping it out here against Terran of all races. It's a lot more common against Zerg. Um, and it's going to be weird, right? Because we're going to have, have Glaive, Glaive Adepts, but we're also going to have a bunch of Cyclones for Azure. I guess it's about the positioning then, you know? The Cyclones, yeah. if they can kite. They, they are going to rip these uh, adepts. <laughs> yeah, they really can. But if you get those like critical mass of adepts mm, mm. Uh, out and in on the top of the cyclones, then they can probably be fine. But mm. it's all about the positioning. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be about you know whether or not Azure has both supply depots um, on on a hotkey to raise them to make oh, sure the shades yes, don't go in. Oh yes, Leo Russia. This is what I love to see, my friend. I don't know if this is necessarily going to be something that Azure is too surprised by, though. He's very active with mm. those cyclones. He does get some more info. Yeah, we'll see what his reaction is going to be again. He has to make sure he pulls the workers, he repairs the bunkers, and make sure that he raises the, the depots um, to kind of like minimize the amount of area that these adepts are going to traverse. So many adepts being walked in here. Like, you've got to be careful if you're Azure. Or he with the pre-pool. There is no shade in. He just walks straight up. Now the shade up towards the high ground is blocked by the supply depots. And now these uh, Cyclones starting to really do a lot of damage with the lock-on. Like you said, the pull of the SDVs keeps that bunker well and truly healthy. And it doesn't look like this is going anywhere fast here, Light. Yeah, and Leo Russia, he's committing to this. He has stopped worker production. Like, he's making more and more adepts, more void rays as well. He is hard committing into this all-in. Cyclone's still active out on the map, seeing if they can try to lock on and do some damage. Yeah, again, they're looking to try and lock on to those Void Rays. That's going to be key there, or maybe even catch the Warp Prism unawares. Fair bit of damage just being chipped away, and good micro from Azure. It's almost like the <laughs> Cyclones are good enough to shut this one down <laughs> on their own so far. Yeah. And Leo Russia, I feel like he's kind of sowing some seeds of doubt in the mind of Azure here. Um, Azua needs to make sure that he doesn't think that this is over just yet because if he gets called off guard trying to check up or drop another CC, that could be the end of the game. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate because we've seen this in the past of the Russia. He is supply blocks. He's making three pylons at a time. So because of that, he's struggling to reinforce across the map. And meanwhile, Azure has spotted the reinforcing gateway. You know? He's going to be well aware that this is not over. The Shade Inn is going to be absolutely massive for Leo Russia. And I think he heard me. He really is hard committing to this last match. Goes in with all of the Glaive Adepts. You do see the pull of the SUVs trying to keep that bunker alive. But so far, so good as the Void Rays finally do take it down, as well as the second bunker. But there's not a whole lot behind that there, Light. It seems like Azure has cleaned this one up and defended it so beautifully. And now the Cyclone going in and chasing down the last couple of units here. This is looking fantastic here for Azur. Exactly. The Adepts, they shaded in. They were able to focus down the, the bunkers, but that was it. Only eight SCVs went down. Azur, he is still ahead in that worker count. He pushes the army away. And pretty soon, I imagine, Azur, he's just going to push out, deal with this gateway. There's really not much else for Leo. He's just continuing to try and make this work, just, you know, pumping out more and more Adepts. I've never seen a a player in ANZ champs with such an empty production tag <laughs> so regularly. There's nothing. There's yeah. nothing going on. Yeah. 
There's a couple of attempts. It's like that TikTok where they're like, what is going on inside his head? And it's it's not not very much. Mostly just uh, he wants to kill. Beautiful pick off oh. from the Cyclone there. Yeah. Trying to uh, get that second Void Ray as well, if possible. Now the Shade in. Forced to be respected by Azur. Is he going to commit to it? Does cancel. Maybe waiting for another wave of Adepts before he does try to commit on top. Yeah, I mean, Lee Russia, at least he isn't supply, um, supply blocked anymore. You know, he has a couple of uh, some room to work with, but... Ooh. Looking at the Western Union economy, worth mentioning is that first uh, base from Leo Russia is starting to be mined out. He's going to try and drop an additional Nexus while keeping the uh, pressure on, but uh, I don't think that... Uh, Adepts and Void Rays are the ideal composition in a PVT, which is probably why you see Leo Russia finally start to diversify his tech a little bit more. He drops that uh, robotics facility. Now Azur feeling a little bit more comfortable as well, drops an additional CC for himself. Yeah, I mean, it's great that Leo, he is going for that next step. He's trying to transition out of this all-in, but it's it took so long to get there, right? Only just now he's throwing down the third. He's trying to tech up. Um, I guess we'll see. We'll wait and see if Azure is going to let it allow him to get this up and running. Azure has been so good with just this one Cyclone, one or two mm -hmm. Cyclones. They've really been worth their weight in gold here in this PVT for him. I'm um, keen to see it. Like, I'm just looking at this army from Leo, and I'm thinking to myself, like... Yeah, Adepts and Void Rays and a couple of Stalkers is not really going to do you any favours against this push that's coming out here from, from uh, Azur here. That is so many tanks. That is a lot of Marines that can sort of kite back. And it's going to have to be the dream engagement for Leo Rusher if he's going to defend this push here. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe if he had a couple of shield batteries at his third, like, that would definitely help out. You know, use that overcharge. But there are none there available. They were thrown down at the natural earlier, and they're just too far away to really, you know, come into play. Hasn't spotted out this push coming in. Hasn't got the shade on top of the tanks, and that's going to be it. Look at all of those tanks. That's so much damage. And before his army's even dead, Leo Russia calls the GG. I am not surprised. Uh, Azur going to take that 2-0 victory. Was the much more solid player in that matchup. Some good defense. Some good uh, know-how of when to push and go out and pressure his opponent. Some good fundamentals. You love to see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was kind of... You know, expected Azure to take this series. Um, maybe not quite in that fashion, but you know, he did do it in that 2-0 and 2-0 and Leo Rusher. I mean, I'm glad he at least did something differently. We didn't see that proxy four gate again. Um, but yeah, he's had a had a rough time here. Yep, uh, I think that's going to be a bit of a learning experience for Leo Rusher, who will have to try to diversify his play a little bit more as he moves into more of these competitions. Mm -hmm. Can't just be a bit of a one-trick pony. Whether you talk about play style or whether you talk about matchup, he's yeah. going to have to work on a few things but definitely some potential there so i hope to see him again in one of these qualifiers in anz champs as going down 04 in his group probably not likely to advance yeah yeah it's been really cool to see all this rising talent throughout the year right it isn't just leo russia in the previous seasons it was quantel it was um psycho as well like there's a lot of you know rising talent and they're all like fighting amongst each other to try and qualify for these events yeah that's what the qualifiers there for it's almost like a qualifier to a qualifier as uh the whole point is you want to be making it through to dream hack win much more likely for Azua now as he does pick himself up another win. But there is some very important games coming up for Azua and some of these other players as they are kind of the ones fighting for that third place position in the group. They want to try to secure themselves a spot in that last chance qualifier. This next game is going to be so, so <sighs> crucial between mm -hmm. Piglet and Azua here. I think if Piglet drops that one, he's probably done. But if he can take that game off of Azua... Either he plays spoiler in the fact that t Bull is still sort of a little bit ahead over there. He might actually be the player who qualifies for that last chance qualifier over there. Um, but we will see there is a couple of games that will also make a bit of a difference. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. We haven't had the luxury of having a TVT due to the lack of Terrans. You know, we only have a single mirror matchup of that this weekend. So, yeah, we are going to be getting into that. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, a lot of potential there. Yeah, it is an important one as well. You know, it, it's good that we save that mirror match up for such an important match in the context of the standings. You've also got Demi and Blisk down there. That's going to be a bit of a difference maker in terms of the standings as well. Uh, plenty of important games. I think it's worth noting that um, we do actually have Justice Simon against Ender. He's trying to make a bit of a resurgence here today. 
I think we'll show the standings in a minute, but until then, I just wanted to let you guys know that Justice Simon, he actually won himself a game over Razorblader previously. Do you remember what the scoreline was that f was there for light? That was a 2-1 over Razorblader. Okay, well, that's a pretty impressive uh, victory, I do say so myself. Razorblade is someone who yesterday and today has actually showed some much better form. You can see he took out Ranger quite, uh, quite solidly a little bit earlier on, so he seems to be trying to fight back a little bit and give himself a bit more of a chance of qualifying with some solid fundamentals. But for Simon to pick, take him down, that's a really, really good victory mm -hmm. in my mind for Simon, who... I feel like I might be cursing Simon a little bit. I feel like every time I watch Simon play, I think, yeah, he's okay, but he's not, you know, fantastic. However, every time that I'm not looking, the man is going out there and winning some pretty good games. So yeah. uh, maybe I'm just not giving him the benefit of the doubt enough. I mean, it could also be like a nerves issue, right? Like maybe it's a little bit harder for him to perform when he's on stream like this. You know, that series was played off stream. So that could have come into play. Um, but as you were saying, like it is a really surprising result and I'm really happy for him that he was able to take out Razorblader. So after that off stream result and some of the results that you see on your screen there, we will re-review this standings. Very important to keep this in your mind try to you know screenshot this one or follow it over there on the liquidpedia page or wherever you can find uh, some of these results as we do see in group a this is what i'm talking about mm -hmm. that next series between azure yep. and piglet so important because t-ball and azure are both fighting for that third position yeah. the last chance qualifier spot Piglet can play spoiler to that and try to get back into things a little bit more. Over on the other side, why I'm saying that that Blisk Demi game is so important is that as well as some of those ender games moving through the rest of things are actually going to make a bit of a difference as to who's going to guarantee themselves that second place position um, up there towards the top of the group or even top two as well. You yeah. saw Razorblade <laughs> drop that series to Justice Simon who's on the bottom of the group actually. Yeah. There could be a bit of a shake up <laughs> in group B as we move through the rest of the competition, right? Like? Definitely. Like even though Razorblade is on the top of his group like he's only got one win advantage compared to Blisk, Demi and Ender like it's only one more win they need to overtake him so it's all up in the air for Group B when it comes to Group A as you were saying Azure versus Piglet that's so important for not just Azure but all of Australia you know like they want one of their boys to make it through <laughs> a weight of a nation on his shoulder <laughs> no pressure there Azure mm -hmm. it's uh, probably not going to affect him too much he's been in plenty of ANZ champs so far mm. um, so I think he's well and truly aware of what the stakes are and uh going to be comfortable in terms of competing he looked very comfortable in that last series that's for sure mm -hmm. yeah definitely um so yeah we are going to be getting into that um after this break but before that um you know we again i'm kind of curious to see how things are going to shape up in group b um we are going to be getting into that later on but but also thucklau versus risky we didn't really get to touch on that we were hyping it up earlier that's probably going to be the matchup of the night yeah battle for the top of the group. They have been two of the stronger performers. Either way, though, stick around. After this short break, we will be getting into Piglet and Azure. right click down the tech lab he could have actually cancelled the cloak there uh this is a bit difficult for azure to deal with bigger than the other bigger faster stronger is azure so far the huge commitment in with a lot of charge lots but look at the different angles that azure has to deal with here he's just By getting the third base they're not going to be able to storm the army liberator sieges up tanks are going to be sieging up and mate what do you do from here uh go next i think you do yeah. three Type charge lot three charge lots go in at a time oh. they're both Already with the pre pool. There is no shade in. He just walks straight up. Now the shade up towards the high ground is blocked by the supply depots. And now not very much. Mostly just uh, he wants to kill. Beautiful pick off oh, from the side. It's too far away to really, you know, come into play. Hasn't spotted out this push coming in. Hasn't got the shade on top of the tanks. And that's going to be it. Look at all of those tanks. G'day StarCraft fans, I'm Maynard. Here to help you get that mental edge over your opponents with the Dare Ice Coffee Play Like a Pro series. For this video, we're going to be talking about hotkeys and control groups. In turn-based strategy games, your keyboard hand is for scratching your chin while you slowly and methodically make decisions. But in real-time strategy games, every second counts, so get that hand back on the keyboard and let's learn our hotkeys. Most StarCraft players will know that selecting things and then pushing control and number one will create control group one. But did you know it goes deeper? Control one will create control group one, overriding anything that was in control group one before. But if you select some units and press shift one, it will add those units to control group one, even if you don't have that control group selected. One more thing that can be really nice for managing your army control groups is using alt. For example, if you have control group one and have some of your units and spellcasters in there that you want to separate from that control group, 
select those particular units and press Alt 2. In this example, it'll steal those units from Control Group 1 and create a new Control Group 2 with them. If you press Control and 2 with this selection, those units will still be in Control Group 1, so keep that in mind. Using Select All Army, or F2 by default, is a very easy tool to use, but if you're using and abusing the Select All Army button a little too much, it can be catastrophic. A drop that you've shift queued into a mineral line could be pulled from its duties, or your spotting units could be pulled out of their positions, and you'll lose map control. It can be good practice to just disable it completely. Now, I can see a lot of people sweating and freaking out right now. Don't worry, grab a dare ice coffee, take a nice big sip, and regain composure. While you're getting better at creating and using control groups without it, if you absolutely need to grab all your army for some reason, you can still do that by clicking on this button. If it's a little harder on yourself to select all army, it becomes less of a crutch. When you feel like you've gotten better at managing your control groups, you can re-enable the all army hotkey again later. It's still a great tool. It's just like eating cookies. It's a sometimes food. Give it a try and happy stock crafting. Uh. Oh. Where did I put them? Come on, Jack. Where are you? Jack! Sammy, first I need to carry you in the game, now in real life. It's the game, Jack! The game! All right, on one condition. We're playing this together. Of course. How are we doing this? Easy. Western Union. I use it all the time. They'll put it in your bank account way faster than a bank transfer. We're talking minutes. And... Done. Got it. You're my hero. So when are we playing this? Tomorrow? No way. I'm playing it now. Yes! Mr. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> this is Callum Murray. <laughs> Callum Murray to the seafood aisle. Callum Murray, why'd they name you that? <laughs> I take you. Callum Murray. <laughs> Let's make a jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee. Multiple witnesses have reported mysterious shadow sightings all around the city. According to experts, the origin of these shadows is still unclear. Me, get delivery like a G. See, hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib, I'm sitting in. Tacos to the chateau, please. Did somebody say? Private jetting in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Ride, M E N U L O G. your style. Get your merch at shop.esogaming.com.